We want to avoid that. We want to stay in the grace part. We want to stay on the right hand of God instead of the left hand of God because we serve an ambidextrous God. Don't let anybody fool you. The first way a Christian suffers is alluded to in the first verse. For as much then as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves that you likewise, you who call yourselves believers, you who say you are a Christian, you who wear the cross, carry the Bible, quote the scriptures, and use Jesus' name, this is for all of us. Now this may be tight, but it's all right. The first way a Christian suffers is in denying himself or herself sin. What do you mean suffering in denying sin? This is the this is let's call it the first level of a Christian's way of suffering is denying ourselves sin. And it's a suffering that we feel in the flesh. In the flesh. Now why is it suffering? Because we think of sin as, you know, when we say the word sin or the devil, it conjures up the ugly, the, you know, almost like smoke is all on it, or flames are coming out of it. It is, it is you know, we say the word sin, it's not wants to be bothered with that, but in actuality, in real life, in the everyday journey, sin is actually quite attractive. Sin is quite pleasant. Sin It is the cake. It is the thing. It is the 
marriage is like cake. Sex is like icing on a cake.
remember when you had a Jerry Curl? Didn't quite learn. The point is, folk don't talk about you. Folk will talk about you because, number one, they, they may not understand your witness, your walk. What God has done for you, where God has brought you out, the fact that he has changed you from an old creature to a new creature. And you have to stand in that newness of life, even if your friends talk about you, even if they tell you that you're corny, you ain't, you ain't hit no more, you ain't down with it no more. So don't be down with them because you have to pick your poison. Either you're going to suffer as a Christian or the judgment of God will begin at the house of God. Pick your poison. Psalm said, nothing between a soul and a sin. Uh, we can't be friends if you come between a soul and a sin. We can't run together if you come between me, my soul and my sin. I, I'm going to miss the laughs we used to have. I'm going to miss the times we used to have. I'm going to suffer in my flesh. We are in this season of Lent. We are in this season. We 
we are looking towards Palm Sunday as Reverend Faith prayed today. We are looking towards what Jesus went, went to the cross for and how he suffered and how he bled and died for our mess. Jesus didn't look. God does not look at the outside. On the outside, we look pretty good. But on the inside, God sees. God knows. You can't, you can't play God. He knows that we need to be washed from our head to our toes. He knows that we need a cleansing. Hallelujah. So we have to walk in our Christian walk. But it's not all about suffering. It is not to be consumed by suffering. It is not to be talking about suffering all the time. In our Christian walk, though we suffer, we must do good. So instead of whining and crying about the suffering you are doing, be a blessing to somebody. Instead of whining and crying about the suffering you are doing, clothe the naked. Feed the hungry. Visit the prisoner. Do something that represents, that exemplifies what Jesus would do. Thank you. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Nothing. So that his blessed face may be seen. <laughs> nothing. Not people down on the job, nothing. Not my own mess, nothing. Not what they said about me, nothing. Not what they did to me, nothing. Not my own shit, nothing. Prevent it. Even the least. God Almighty. The least of God's favor is better than all that the world has to give. The least, nothing prevented the least of his faith. Amen. So keep the way clean.